One of my subscribers asked me if I could make a video talking about 50cc scooters. I guess the first thing would be speed. That's very obvious right now because I'm facing a headwind and I'm doing about 29.5 to 30 miles per hour into maybe a 10 mile per hour headwind or sidewind, something like that. I think it's a bit to the side, but at any rate, speed is a big complaint of a lot of people with 50cc scooters and I know I watched one other video from somebody on YouTube saying just flat out period don't buy a 50cc scooter because they're slow. If you buy one and then your main complaint is well it doesn't go over 30, 35 miles per hour, it's just so slow it's useless, you should have done some research before you actually bought it. If you're gonna buy a 49cc scooter expect that it'll go 30 to 35 miles per hour pretty reliably. Uh, depends what you get. There's a lot of 49cc scooters out there. Four strokes, two strokes. Some of it goes faster, some of it goes slower, some of it's restricted. Um, really just depends what your budget is, what exactly you're looking at. But in general, assume that a 49cc is going to go 30, 35 miles per hour pretty reliably, regularly. You can cruise around at those speeds. Um, some, what I'm on right now is a uh, cheap Tau Tau ATM50 A1. It's a 139QMB, it's a 49cc four-stroke engine, and it is one of the most common scooters that you'll find out there, especially if you're looking for cheap scooters. I got it for about $700, and I don't know, there's millions of the things out there. Very, very common, most common cheap scooter engine, scooter platform that there is. With me on it, like I said, this goes about 30 to 35 mile per hour regularly. I can expect to cruise there. It slows down on hills, it slows down in wind, anything like that. But decent conditions, flat ground, 30, 35 miles per hour. Some people with the same scooter say they get 40 miles per hour and above. I've had this thing up as far as about maybe 45 miles per hour. That's tucked down, going down a hill, you know, cheating. It's not really what you would do on a day-to-day -day basis and expect it to do regularly. I'm a big rider. I'm about 300 pounds, six foot two or so. And uh, with a little bit of tuning, the thing can get up and go fast enough that I'm not holding up traffic or anything like that, at least in town. If you're my size, if you're 200 plus, then uh, yeah, it's not gonna be quick you are probably not going to be terribly satisfied with it and you're, end up, you're going to end up wanting a big bore kit or something to improve the performance. But lighter riders shouldn't be a problem. If you're trying to go 50 miles per hour or you want to go out on the highway, just forget the 49cc scooter because most likely you're going to have problems getting it there. Not that you can't do it with big bore kits and all sorts of performance upgrades, but uh, they certainly don't do it out of the box for the most part and a lot of times you're going to be looking at legal issues when you start driving a 49 cc around to 50 miles per hour it depends where you live but in many cases i think in probably most cases in the united states it's not legal to ride a 49 cc at 50 miles per hour in that case you should uh you should really look into a 150 scooter or larger if you got to be on the highway in my opinion you should look at 250 cc plus whether that's a scooter, or motorcycle, whatever you prefer, the uh, 50s are not meant for that and the 150s really are struggling and not in their element on the highway. I guess one of the next things I should talk about considering that is legality of them and requirements. Always check your laws before getting into this stuff. Some require a moped permit or a moped license. Some require a valid driver's license, just a standard license like you drive a car. Some require no license at all. When it gets to the point that you're above, say, 30, 35 miles per hour, depends on the state, could be 40, then a lot of them will say that you need a motorcycle license to operate a scooter above X amount of speed. Another thing, if you try to make one faster, with a big bore kit, a lot of times it's technically illegal to have over 49 cc's or over 50 cc's. So once you put the big bore kit on there, it's technically illegal. Another sort of uh, legal related issue would be registration and insurance. This is another one that varies state by state. Where I live in Maryland, for a long time, 
it was pretty much just you bought a scooter and you rode it around and the state really didn't care other than obey like 30 mile per hour have headlights and taillights and some stuff like that but within the last couple of years they passed laws so now i have to have registration and insurance on the scooter which here is not a big deal because registration was pretty cheap here it's not even something that i have to renew also on insurance some areas will require you to have insurance and some areas don't require you to have insurance here i have to have insurance and for three 49 cc scooters it is under two hundred dollars per year and i don't have the greatest driving record so that's a pretty good rate another major thing that comes up financially is gas that's a valid reason to buy one i think even as I said earlier, I'm 300 pounds, and even at that weight, on this scooter in stock form, I can get 80, 85 miles per gallon on average. And that's me riding around back roads like you're seeing now, wide open throttle, or in town. And even in town, I usually ride faster than I should, so I'm fairly heavy on the throttle, and still it averages out 80, 85 miles per gallon. If I can do it, then I would imagine most riders can expect 80 plus miles per gallon on a four stroke. Two strokes, you could be looking at more like 60 miles per gallon somewhere in that neighborhood. Could be better, could be worse. Another thing kind of related to the legal issues that I don't hear people talk about a lot when they talk about uh, scooter pros and cons is riding on the shoulder. Now, in some states, you can ride in the, the regular lane of travel and in other states like mine I am supposed to ride on the shoulder as you see right now if there is a shoulder at least when the speed limit is 30 or above because our legal scooter speed limit is 30 miles per hour now riding on the shoulder in itself isn't always a terrible thing but one major downside to it that can greatly increase expense or at least for me it has is debris in the shoulder which ends up in tire punctures because basically nobody else around here is riding on the shoulder so i end up being the street sweeper and picking up all of the nails and screws and fun things that end up on the shoulder the other thing about riding on the shoulder that can be pretty negative is uh here and there you get people on their cell phones or if you ride late at night i tend to see drunks and they swerve into the shoulder and of course if they're swerving into the shoulder that's where you are it's not a fun situation to be in another somewhat related issue is traffic in some cases traffic can actually be a lot better on a scooter you can get through traffic quicker on a scooter depending where they let you ride or how they let you ride now, like I said, in my state, I can ride on the shoulder, so there are some areas like a beach town around here where there is pretty much bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic, but they have a shoulder and a bus lane. And if you ride in the shoulder and bus lane, then you can pretty much pass all of the traffic, even going 30 miles per hour, when it's busy down there in the summer. So it's actually a lot quicker to get around town on a scooter than it is on a car in some cases. And I would imagine in areas if they will let you lane split, it's probably about the same where you can really get around traffic quite quickly. If you're just out in the middle of nowhere like me, then it's a lot slower than a car or a motorcycle because you're pretty much just riding around at 35 and there's no traffic to deal with. Another thing that can be a plus about specifically 50cc scooters, I believe, is parking. Now with larger scooters and motorcycles, you may have motorcycle and scooter parking spots. But uh, with 50cc scooters, some of them, because of the way the laws are, in some areas and don't just go doing this without checking the laws but in some areas you can actually park a 50 cc scooter much like you would a bicycle and chain it up to a bike rack or park it on the sidewalk in some cases so if that's how it is where you live you may find that parking is much much simpler with a 50 cc than anything else that you can ride around now since the scooters are so light and easy to haul and carry around and store and things like that, that can make scooter theft more of a problem. If somebody wants it bad enough, it's 200 pounds, they'll get it. Another selling point of a 50cc scooter or motor scooters in general can be simplicity of use. Now with a motorcycle, you've got a clutch and a gear shift and all that stuff, foot brake. With a scooter, more or less, you've got your throttle. You've got front brake, which should be on the right side, and your rear brake on the left side. 
beyond that it's just headlights, horn, stuff like that. But that's more or less all the controls you really have to worry about riding around. So you start it up, as you can see it idles, you're not holding the clutch, you're not taking it out of gear, anything like that. When you're ready to go, you twist the throttle and it starts going. And of course, you know, if you need to slow down, you let off throttle, hit your brakes. That's pretty much what it is to it, other than steering, of course, which you can use your weight to steer, you can push on the handlebars to steer, but on the little scooters like most of the 50s with 10 and 12 inch wheels, they are very, very easy to maneuver. Another plus for a 50cc or scooters in general is storage space. So you can see, unlike a motorcycle, most of the time you can lift up the seat and you've got room to fit. In some cases you can fit a helmet, you can fit your tool kit, you can fit all, whatever. You can see about the room you've got under there. Sometimes you'll have a glove box or some kind of storage space up here. And a lot of times the scooters will include a luggage rack. Mine's kind of taken apart, but you'll have a luggage rack and you can put a uh, trunk on the back of it for even more storage. And the 50cc takes its revenge. Yeah, how you like that, buddy? That's right. <laughs>